have not been on this camera in so long, it's like I forgot how to use it. Testing for static. Testing for static. Please do not have static on the microphone. Removing hairs from the microphone. Hope that's good. No, my face is over here. Don't look at those masks. How did we? Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Hey! Comment below if you guys want me to turn into a chiropractic crack compilation channel. Hello beautiful people, my name is Georgia Bridgers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Strange bird flying awfully close outside. Hi, lovely, wonderful, beautiful, amazing people. How are you today? Well, Georgia, there's a global pandemic going on. How do you think I'm doing today? Me too. All jokes aside, I hope you guys are all doing well and safe and are in a decently good headspace considering the circumstances. How do I start this video? It's kind of awkward. We're talking about internalized homophobia. Yeah! That was disgusting. Anyway, a little bit of background. For those of you who are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Georgia Bridgers. I'm a star. <laughs> I'm an LGBTQ advice and lifestyle YouTuber, content creator. I'm kind of big on TikTok right now, guys. I'm just gonna put that out there if you wanna check it out. On my channel, I like to use this space as a place to have healthy, safe, meaningful, important conversations regarding the LGBTQ community. And I will also force you to watch my vlogs while we're at it. Today, I wanted to tackle a very difficult subject that a lot of people in the LGBTQ community experience or have dealt with in some way, but there's not much out there about it. At least in my personal opinion, I have not come across an open like forum about it. So I thought, why not here, why not now? Today we are going to be talking about internalized homophobia. I am going to share my experience with internalized homophobia, but before we get started, I have some very exciting news. If you guys remember, a couple months ago, well, many months ago, last year in fact, I did a brand deal with a lovely jewelry company called Ana Luisa, and I am so excited to now state that I am officially a brand ambassador for Ana Luisa. All the jewelry that I am wearing in today's video is by Ana Luisa. Now, let me tell you guys a little bit of, a little bit of stuff about that. Ana Luisa has exceptional quality. Their jewelry is tarnish free and long lasting. They have premium details. They only use the best noble metals. Not to mention the fair prices. There are no luxury markups. All their pieces start at $39. And one of my favorite things about Ana Luisa is their carbon neutrality goal. Their goal is to create a net zero carbon footprint by the end of 2020 and moving on to the years beyond that. I love my pieces because I can wear them dressed up or dressed down. Yes, these earrings work with sweats, believe me. They're simple, delicate, darling, and I know that I will have these pieces for years to come. If you're interested in checking out Ana Luisa, which I highly recommend, you can go ahead and click that link in my description below and use my code GEORGIA10 for 10% off. Seriously, do it, you won't regret it. internalized homophobia. So right off the bat, what is internalized homophobia? It can be experienced differently throughout different people in their lifetime. I found a really great definition that really resonates well with me from the website revelandriot.com. It has been defined as the gay person's direction of negative social attitudes toward the self, leading to a devaluation of the self and resultant internal conflicts and poor self-regard. Simply put, it is when 
when a person in the LGBTQ community is subjected to the societal pressures and stigmas about the gay community and it's replayed essentially on a record in their head therefore making themselves feel uncomfortable in their sexuality or uncomfortable in the LGBTQ community as a whole. They believe that those stigmas and stereotypes are true. And this happened to me and I didn't really know what happened to me right off the bat. Let me share a little bit about that with you guys. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, how can you be gay and homophobic toward yourself? or the community. It's possible. Unfortunately, in many ways more than one, those heteronormative societal values that we are introduced at birth really stick with a person and can have a long lasting impact on someone's mental health as they begin their sexuality journey. Not to mention internalized homophobia expands into a bunch of different subcultures, which includes transphobia, lesbian phobia, biphobia, and much more. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it a bit more broad, focused on internalized homophobia, the seeds of that, and how to grow from it and how to dispel it all together. However, if you guys are enjoying this conversation and want to continue it, uh, we can talk about specific experiences down below in the comments. The one thing I ask of you all is to remain kind, have an open mind and an open heart above all else, and be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Share your experience if you do feel so, um, if you do feel so complied, if you do feel so whatever that phrase is. If you do feel so implied, complied, I was close. Remember, this is a safe space. And if someone makes it a not safe space, safe space. And if I see anyone making it an unsafe space, you are deleted, you are blocked. So I'll take a deep breath. This is a hard topic, and I know it can be scary and really debilitating to a person, but it's okay, let's talk through it. It's like I'm your own personal gay therapist. I do not have a degree in that. My degree was essentially in YouTube, so do with that what you will. Let me start by sharing my experience with internalized homophobia with you all. For the longest time, I didn't know what internalized homophobia was, and I didn't know that I was subconsciously experiencing it. Growing up, I was in the Catholic school system from kindergarten all the way through high school. So that's age five to age 17 and a half. I had a late birthday. I wasn't 18 until after I graduated high school, okay? So I was in the Catholic school system the majority of my life. I learned those values which expanded from religion class going to church not really having sex education yeah that's just the way things were I will note however that I was never outwardly taught that it was bad to be gay oh my god Luna I did not know you were in here how long have you been under the bed I was never taught or raised up to believe, whether in school or by my parents, that it was wrong to be gay. It was just kind of seen as it wasn't going to be an option for me. I didn't grow up thinking that it was bad to be gay, but I grew up thinking that I could never be gay. It just wasn't going to happen to me. I was going to marry a man, have a lovely husband, have a couple of kids and whatnot. That's just how I perceived my life until. So because of that, I always I always felt uncomfortable with the idea of me being a part of the LGBTQ community. I was fine with other people being gay. I was fine seeing it on television, even though it was rarely on television. It still is rarely on television. However, I was just like, I couldn't do that. That could never be me. Come to find out, that is internalized homophobia. Interesting, huh? So when I was in high school and kind of started having little inklings, wondering if I perhaps liked women as well as men and other human beings, I was like, well, I just will have to live with that and never tell a soul for as long as I live because I am supposed to have a husband. I'm supposed to have a boyfriend. I'm supposed to be with a boy and I do think I think a lot of that had to do with my upbringing in the Catholic Church because of all of these teachings that I was in every day in this very heteronormative place that I was living. I just pushed everything into the back of my mind and was like, no, 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 that is not happening. So I shoved it down really deep in my soul when I was 
in high school and seemingly forgot about it. Then I got to college. When I was a freshman in college, that is when it really hit me in the face. I realized that there was a bigger world. I lived a very sheltered life, not in a sense of uh, you're not allowed to do things, but I just didn't know about things. I didn't know much about the LGBTQ community and all the beautiful things that were out there. At no fault of my parents or anything, that's kind of just what happens in Catholic school systems like that, in my opinion. So I went to college and I was like, well, would you look at that? The tables have turned and I do indeed think I'm bisexual and I kind of think I'm okay with not suppressing that. But as I started my coming out journey, I was in such denial still. I was like, how can this be? My whole life I have learned one thing. I have only learned the heterosexual lifestyle and that is what I am supposed to follow. <sighs> I didn't want to be bisexual because I was scared of leaving the norm. I didn't know what that was going to look like. At the same time, I was still like, is this right for me? It can be right for other people, but it's not right for me. I can't be bisexual. That's just not who I am, honey. I chalked it up to experimenting in college, just liking Lauren Haregi from Fifth Harmony. Did I say that right? I know like, you know, her name is Lauren Haregi, but I've been watching interviews views of her lately and she's been saying Lauren Hauregi, which is obviously the way to pronounce her last name. So I'm just trying to be respectful. Let me know Lauren if you're watching this. But this, this internal conflict was too much for me and I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't push it down anymore. I was bubbling up to the point about to burst. So I came out. Just kidding, it wasn't that easy. So I started writing in my journal. It was a very depressing journal because I was in a very depressing time in my life. I didn't know what the future held. I was having a sh time in college. My freshman year of college was horrible. I wasn't being the real me. So I started journaling and just free form writing, writing, writing my little heart out. And it was so unbelievably therapeutic for me and it let me bring to light what my soul was trying to connect to my brain, but my brain would not allow that to happen. And essentially I did come to terms with my sexuality. I discovered that I was and am bisexual. Ta-da! So I came out and I thought everything was gonna be great. I thought I wasn't going to have to deal with this internalized homophobia, even though I didn't know it was that quite yet. And I thought everything would be, well, <laughs> rainbows. But I was still in a very heterosexual, heteronormative world. I was at university, University of Cincinnati, Ohio, which is a very straight place. I was president of my sorority. In my sorority, I was scared that I was going to be too gay for the girls or not going to be gay enough for the community. Off topic, but the girls in my sorority were nothing but beautifully supportive of me as I came out and went through my coming out journey. Anyway, I was still in a straight world. Cause we are living in a straight world and I am a bisexual girl. Oh, very singy songy today, aren't we Georgia? The icing on the cake in my internalized homophobia situation is that I am very feminine. Could you tell? So I dealt with the battle of, do I look gay enough? I don't look gay. How can I be gay? I don't look gay. I don't look bi. I don't look queer. I don't, what is going on? I don't look like I belong in the community. How can I belong to the community? <sighs> There is just so, there was so much back and forth going on in my brain. I was like, what the f This isn't fair. Why is this happening to me? But I kept pushing it down because something kind of unique happened. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention before I get into my unique spot. Even though I came out to my close girlfriends and my sorority and my family and whatnot, I was still terrified to come out to guys because I thought that I would be considered less desirable if I was gay, bisexual, part of the community. There's another dinger of internalized homophobia. 
Then something kind of unique happened to me. I ended up coming out on my YouTube channel here by the grace of God and the universe aligning. My video with my mom went wacko berserko viral and I was like thrown into the LGBTQ community and just surrounded with so much LGBTQ love. I am very lucky that that happened for me because it really opened my eyes to the beautiful community out there. It took me past Cincinnati, Ohio and I got to see the bigger picture of what this beautiful community is all about. So really immersing myself into the community helped me dissolve some of those fears. Along with that, writing in my journal was helping me talk through some of those internalized conflicts in my head. So all that happened. And then I started dating a woman. I started dating my lovely girlfriend, Tori. I had never been in love like that before. I'd never really been in love. So it was such a wonderful, special experience for me to get that then and still have now. To be able to experience that and to be with Tori, but being nervous to publicly display our love for each other because in the back of my mind I was always like what are other people thinking of me of course I thought of it in the sense of safety too because unfortunately we live in a world where some people abuse and murder gay people for being gay so of course there was that safety aspect in the back of my mind but for the sense of this video something really struck a chord with me to be like Georgia it is time to do some serious rewiring of your brain. If you are nervous to kiss your girlfriend on the sidewalk because of this internalized homophobia battle that you have inside your head, that was the big flip for me. I'm gonna talk to you about how I got over, am getting over, it's still, it's still a battle in everyday life. So, internalized homophobia. Internalized. Internal. It is the biggest internal battle many people in the LGBTQ community face. So I realized I had to turn around and do some internal working on myself. I had to rewire my brain. It took a lot of time. I started becoming very hyper aware of myself and my thoughts. So whenever I would be thinking something along the line of like my internalized homophobia battle, I'd catch myself. Real quick, you gotta catch yourself. Hear yourself say it in your head and be like, whoa, no, that is not me talking. That is my fake ego talking that has been taught and fed these horrible things my whole life. So you take that thought out of your head, or when you catch it, you rewrite it, reword it, rewire your brain. Say for example, Tori and I are walking, holding hands. I look around, I see a bunch of people staring at us and I'm like, oh my God, what are they thinking? Like, I can't be doing this. No, stop right there, stop. <sighs> Deep breath, forgive yourself. Do not think like that. Think, wow, I'm so happy to be holding my significant other's hand on this beautiful day outside. I can't wait for dinner tonight. Something like that. Rewire, do not allow those thoughts to come through. And eventually, if you keep a pattern like that, you know, it takes 30 days. Is it 30 days to break a habit or 30 days to pick up a habit? Or is it both? Regardless, <laughs> doing that over time, it will become a habit and those thoughts will eventually just slowly but surely fade to the background. I'm not gonna say this is gonna happen quickly. It definitely does not all erase at once. But working on things like that over time, it's the world's biggest relief to not hear your ego nagging in your brain, saying that you're not valid, you're gross, you're disgusting, you're not worthy of love, you should be in a heterosexual relationship, no thank you. I don't need that negativity in my life. That is not the real me speaking. That is not the real me who will accept that. 
continue with that self-reflection that I talked about, writing in journals or if those who prefer writing in the form of poems or songs or meditation or reading self-help books, things like that. One thing that I really realized is that it was a lot easier for me to overcome my internalized homophobia and rewiring my brain and educating myself is that I had to love myself wholeheartedly and I know that is a very difficult journey for some but it's so worth it because once I loved myself I wouldn't let myself my I wouldn't let my ego talk poorly about myself which feeds directly into that internalized homophobia that our egos feed to us falsely you can do it I know you can anyone is capable of this it'll be hard work for some and even harder work for others but if you put in the time little by little results will come each and every one of you are so deserving of love and happiness you have the ability Abilities to rewire your brain into letting yourself accept that love and that happiness. I hope that this video has been helpful for any of you who are going through struggles with internalized homophobia. You're not alone. You do not need to feel guilty about it. Feeling guilty about it will just make you feel worse about the whole situation. Your love is valid and your happiness is valid and you can get through this. This I know to be true for sure. That's all I have for this video. That was so much longer than I was expecting. I even wrote myself an outline because I talk way too much with these kind of videos, but I just love talking. So what can I say? I'm a Leo. Once again, feel free to continue the conversation down in the comments below. Reminder to be kind to yourself and others. I will not stand for any hate on this platform. You are respected and loved here. I love you all. Don't forget to be your best self and I will see you in the next next video. Bye-bye.